Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tomas Malashevitz, and I'm here today to talk to you about my team's work on Deep Visual Slam. The title of my presentation is Deep Visual Slam Front End, Super Point, Super Glue, and Super Maps. This talk is being delivered at the joint workshop on long-term visual localization, visual idometry, and geometric and learning-based SLAM at CBPR 2020. Let's begin. Visual SLAM is the problem of performing simultaneous localization and mapping solely from images. This is a very important problem in numerous applications, such as mixed reality, depicted on the top row, as well as robotics, depicted in the next two rows. Within robotics, we have tasks such as self-driving vehicles and autonomous carts, both tasks requiring significant um, capabilities in mobility and perception about space. In today's talk, we will talk about three things. First, I'll describe SuperPoint. We'll have a discussion about architectures and training paradigms. These are the things you really need to know if you want to replace local features with convolutional neural networks. Second, I'll discuss superglue, that is our team's attempt to utilize graph neural networks and attention to improve the feature matching process. Finally, I'll talk about supermaps. These are some ideas for extending our work and moving beyond pairwise matching. And it's going to be a roadmap towards end-to-end -to -end deep visual slam. Let's begin with the first part. Visual slam can typically be decomposed into two parts. There's the front end and there's the back end. The goal of the front end is to deal with image inputs. It's natural to use deep learning here, particularly convolutional neural networks, because we've seen many successes in applying deep nets directly to images. In the context of visual slam, the back end will be an optimization problem over pose and map quantities. This is generally solved with nonlinear least squares problem. It's also known as bundle adjustment. Our solution to this decomposition of SLAM into the front and the back ends starts with SuperPoint. SuperPoint is our deep SLAM front end. It's a convolutional neural network that takes an input as image and it produces key point locations as well as key point descriptors. This network is fully convolutional. That means you don't have to extract patches first and then send them through a separate machine learning system. The points in the descriptors are also computed jointly, meaning the backbone shares most of the computation between these two tasks. And finally, we've had great results using VGG-like backbones. There's no reason why we can't modernize this with ResNet and more recent approaches. It's important to note that our approach was really designed for real-time processing on a GPU. It does mean that we had to use a smaller backbone than researchers would like, and we had to deal with sparse points because in order to build SLAM systems that are extremely efficient, using sparse points is still the best way to go. I'll make a quick sort of point here is that what was interesting about that super point work is that we devised the key point or the interest point detection head to perform a classification problem. Now, the only thing that the network has to do is classify which pixel is interesting or not. We cast this as a probability over eight, um, 65 locations. The 65 locations are an eight by eight pixel region together with a dustbin region. We don't use deconvolutional layers in our network unlike uh, UNETs and SEGNETs. This makes it extremely fast. So now let's ask ourselves, how can we train such a front end? Well, to set up the training, we generate a large number of image pairs where we know the correspondences. We use Siamese training. Our pairs are generated and they're related by a homography. The training of the descriptor is relatively straightforward because once we generate the homographies, we know where a pixel in the left image maps to the pixel in the right image. The remaining difficulty is to think about the key points themselves. You know, where do they come from? Where can we get a data set that defines which points are interesting? It's going to be very difficult to take images such as the ones I'm showing on the screen right now and send them on Amazon Mechanical Turk and ask people to label interesting points. Interest points are quantities that were devised by the computer vision research community. 
to help machines tackle the image matching problem. Interest points do not exist in the human mind, except that of researchers. We decided to propose a self-supervised training procedure that works as follows. First, we define a synthetic world where corners and interesting things are well delineated. We first train on that, and then we use the resulting detector to label a real data set of images, the MS Coco data set in our case. The procedure that we invented to take the labels and propagate them from one data set to the next is called homographic adaptation, because to no surprise, it uses a lot of homographies. Let's take a look at some of the synthetic images we pre-train with. Now, these are simple, um, non-photorealistic generations of simple shapes. These are the kinds of things you would see in a, a classic book on corner detection from the 70s and the 80s. These are the kinds of images people had typically tested Harris corner detectors on. We generate these in Python. We can generate millions, if not billions, of these examples. They work extremely well. In fact, our earlier version of SuperPoint, which was just the interest point detection part, we called it Magic Point, and we had looked at experiments compared to other typical interest point detectors, and we were pleasantly surprised that not only did our method outperform the earlier ones, it worked extremely well as the images got darker and uh, had more blur. Let's now take a look at the homographic adaptation training procedure. The goal is we want to simulate planar camera motion. A homographic adaptation is a self-labeling technique designed to suppress spurious detections and enhance repeatable points. It's a little bit more complicated than just running the detector once on an image and then saving the output. Let's see how it works. Let's start with an unlabeled input image. What we will do is we will warp the image multiple different ways and run our magic point detector. Each output will give us a different set of points. We can then warp them back and we can reason about what is the superset of detected points. This procedure works extremely well. Let me show you some final examples. This is an example of the final SuperPoint train system running on an example pair of images. In the top left, we see SuperPoint. In the top right, we see Lift, another deep learning based system. In the bottom left, we see SIFT, one of the most well-known local feature matching methods. And in the bottom right, we see ORB. Notice that SuperPoint is able to produce a higher density of green lines. The green lines are the correct matches. Matches are determined by matching the descriptors as nearest neighbors in descriptor space. Notice also that ORB in the bottom right tends to concentrate a large number of detections around um, highly textured regions. This is generally not a good thing if your goal is to not only produce a large number of matches, but later estimate the relative pose between the two images. In this next example here, we see a slightly more difficult pair. Now we see lift and sift also performing fairly well, but we do see more interest points coming out of the super point method. And in this last example, we see now a rotation between the two images and we see the lift method suffering. And again, super point has a nice clean high density of matches. So, so far I talked about SuperPoint and its training, and I explained that all of the training is based on 2D images and 2D correspondences. We wanted to ask ourselves, how is this going to generalize to SuperPoint? A lot of people had doubts that our 2D based training procedure would not work on real sequences. We used a simple connect the dots nearest neighbor algorithm, and we ran SuperPoint on a large number of videos from different data sets. Let's take a look at what SuperPoint looks like when running on different data sets. You can see that SuperPoint seems to work quite well. And in this case, what we are showing is pairwise tracking put together in sort of video form. We released a pre-trained SuperPoint network and it has been a big success in the community. We see many people using our system. It's implemented in PyTorch. Very easy to get the system up and running. We first released this at the first Deep Learning for Visual Slam workshop at CVPR 2018. Please uh, go to our uh, GitHub page if you want to take a look at sort of SuperPoint and play with it yourself. Before I continue and talk about um, the other projects, I want to take a little uh, break and talk about the robustness property of SuperPoint. We asked ourselves if we could apply the similar architecture to other highly related tasks. We adapted SuperPoint to an instance detection problem 
of a specific fiducial pattern that is used for camera calibration. Here, the name of the method is CherukoNet, but it's the same thing as SuperPoint, except we replaced the real value descriptors with an ID classifier. In this case, our pattern has 16 points, so we have a 16-way classifier. Each point detected could be one of the 16 points or none of the above. This Cheruko net works extremely well as the images get darker. In this visualization going from left to right, we see the same image getting darker, and we see the raw images at the top, an OpenCV output that is a classical image processing system, and our deep Cheruko net on the bottom. Notice that for some of the images, they're so dark a human can't see the pattern, yet the Cheruko net is able to detect the IDs correctly. Here's a video form showing this robustness property of Deep Chiruko. In each video, the left-hand side shows our Deep Chiruko system and the right-hand side shows the OpenCV output. Every time the frame turns red, that means there's not enough detections or the system failed. Notice that there are significantly more red frames with the classical system than with our Deep Chiruko system. Next, we asked ourselves the question if we could improve SuperPoint with real data and the visual odometry backend. So far, SuperPoint was trained from MS Coco data, that is non-sequential data. Let's take a look at what happens when you wire up a very simple VO system together with SuperPoint. It's not that difficult to recover the camera poses, as well as the 3D locations for the associated 2D points. Here's another example showing what happens when you run visual odometry backend using SuperPoint on another sequence from the Freiburg TUM RGBD dataset. We realized that one of the benefits of VO-based SuperPoint training is that we can establish correspondences across time. We saw earlier that the SuperPoint tracker worked quite well. Now we're essentially taking this tracker and upgrading it to 3D with the bundle adjustment computation. Determining which points were tracked successfully or not additionally lets us determine which points are stable and which ones aren't. Let's take a quick look at our self-improving VO algorithm. We start with an input monocular sequence. We then run our super point on the sequence to create point tracks. These point tracks are upgraded to 3D using VO and this gives us a final labeled point track sequence. We define stability by looking at the reprojection error. If the reprojection error is less than one pixel, we say the point is stable. If the reprojection error is greater than five pixels or some other predetermined large amount, we say the point is not stable. Otherwise, we ignore the point. Here are some videos of taking super points and running them through VO and looking at the output of the stability labeling. In green, we have the stable points. In black, we have the ignore points. And in red, we have the unstable points. Training with these labeled sequences follows the recipe of SuperPoint using random homographies to create more data augmentation. We evaluated our SuperPoint VO system against the original SuperPoint and numerous other methods on the pose estimation task on ScanNet. Here, two images are fed into the system and the goal is to recover the relative pose. The plot on the left is gonna be the rotation error and the plot on the right is the translation error. The dotted line at the top is super point VO and the orange line right below it is the super point um, system trained on ScanNet and in green, we have the super point system trained on Coco. The super point system trained on ScanNet does not use the sequences. VO only comes in in the dashed line. When we ran our experiments on a small baseline of one second, we noticed that VO only helps a little bit. We repeated the experiments with a larger frame difference, namely frames 60 apart, corresponding to two seconds of motion. Now we started seeing a larger gap between the top performing method, namely super point VO, and all the other methods. Finally, when we looked at the largest time delta, a difference of three seconds, we saw the biggest performance gap. So one of the things that we learned from these experiments is that we really should be looking at wider and wider baselines. It seems for small baselines, the trick of training with homographies 
is just good enough. Let's now go into the second part called superglue. Well, I'm going to discuss how we applied deep matching ideas to superpoint. We really wanted to answer the problem, how can we learn to solve the correspondence problem? Do something even more profound than just making superpoint better. This work, Superglue, learning feature matching with graph neural networks, will be presented at this year's main CVPR conference. This is work done with Paul Edward Sarlin, Daniel Tone, myself, and Andrew Rabinowicz at Magic Leap. Paul received his master's thesis for this work, and he will later uh, tell you more about the ins and outs of this technique. Superglue is made up of two components, a graph neural net and an optimal transport layer. The goal of Superglue is to solve wide baseline matching for image pairs and do this in real time using a GPU. Superglue does give us state-of-the-art indoor and outdoor matching. We have separate Superglues, one that works with SIFT and then one that works with SuperPoint. Important thing to note here is that Superglue's goal is to be better than motion-guided matching without any motion model at all. We saw in our earlier work matching done with VO, and in practice, using motion estimates is important in order to make everything work better. What we really wanted to do is replace heuristic design with one big network that can learn how to solve this kind of ambitious alignment problem without requiring any motion priors. The first part of superglue is a graph neural network with attention. This part encodes contextual cues and priors. It reasons about the 3D scene. The second part is uh, the solution of a partial assignment problem. We use a Sinkhorn algorithm here, which is a classical optimization technique. Now the final output will be a partial assignment between the points in the left image and the points in the right image. An important thing to note here is that superglue requires both sets of local features as input. We broke the traditional paradigm of doing all the processing on each image independently and then doing simple nearest neighbor matching. We instead fuse the representations relatively early, do a lot of communication across both images, and then get the final correspondences. Let's take a look at some videos of Superpoint and Superglue in action. On the right, we have Superpoint and Superglue, and on the left, we have Superpoint with nearest neighbor matching and a couple of other heuristics. We see that Superpoint is able to, um, together with Superglue, produce a larger number of higher quality matches as depicted by green lines. The red lines are spurious detections. Notice the larger number of red lines on the left compared to the right. We trained another superglue system, this time on outdoor data, in order to show that we can get really competitive results on a large number of data sets. On the left, we're looking at superpoint plus nearest neighbor matching plus last year's OA net, which is an inlier classifier system. And on the right, we have superpoint and superglue. Note again the large number of high quality green matches. We evaluated superglue on indoor and outdoor data sets. The most important part to see from this um, figure is red, which is super point being used with super glue. If you look at the dark blue, you'll see the results of SIFT with super glue. Now this is a different super glue one trained to work exactly with SIFT. Most important take home message is that super glue yields large improvements in all cases. We released our pre-trained super glue network and it runs at 15 frames per second on 640 by 480 images using approximately 512 key points using a GPU. You can run this on a commodity desktop with a GPU. The demo also works reasonably fast, not quite 15 frames per second, using a MacBook Pro. We encourage you to go to the GitHub page, get the code, and play with it yourself. Here are just six videos of what I could come up with in about one to two minutes per video. By downloading the superglue code, you will run something that works directly on your webcam 
Now in these visualizations, red means high confidence match and blue means low confidence match. The camera is not calibrated in this case. So I can't say that a match is correct or incorrect. I can only say it's highly confident or not confident. Notice that by moving the camera around, shaking it, occluding it, and breaking the rigidity assumption of the scene, you can learn a lot about how this works. Finally, let's talk about what comes next. What comes after Superpoint and Superglue? Rather than describing how to build the next thing, I want to describe the high level things that we need in order to take Superpoint and Superglue and make it work like an entire SLAM system. First of all, the work I showed you earlier works with a pair of images. What we really need to do is work with a set of images. That means we need to think about multiple images being matched to one image or multiple images being matched to multiple other images. Second, Superpoint and Superglue solely does the matching component. It requires a classical pose estimation system on top to get relative poses. I believe the future is to design networks that can do the pose estimation inside. This will be an important milestone in order to turn our work into a full end-to-end -end SLAM pipeline. Also, Superpoint and Superglue does not have any loop closure mechanism. At this point, it's a little bit too expensive to run an entire Superglue pipeline on all potential keyframe candidates. What's necessary is a very quick procedure to determine if it's worth even running Superglue. This can be done with keyframe embeddings and the Superpoint front end can be augmented to create one global image descriptor. Superpoint and Superglue modules are also trained independently. It will be important to take these ideas and show how to do end-to-end -end training, although I feel this is not as important as other people would like you to believe. Last, Superpoint and Superglue is a combination of convolutional neural networks and graph neural networks. The system has two different notions of receptive field. The convolutional neural network has a growing receptive field that is Gaussian-like, and the receptive field of superglue is much larger because the attention mechanism allows the features to communicate with each other across the entire image. It'll be important to reconcile these two notions, study them, and determine what should be the job of the feature descriptor if you're going to be using a complicated network like superglue for the matching afterwards. Before I conclude, I want to outline some open problems at the intersection of deep learning and SLAM that I strongly believe will drive innovation. First, multi-user SLAM. I believe it's going to be important to create representations or maps that work across a large number of agents. The problem of one SLAM system running in a room, creating a map, and then a second person coming in from a brand new location and being able to align themselves to that map is very important. As we have more and more robots collaborating together, it'll be impossible to assume that each robot can uh, maneuver to the same point of space. Second, it'll be important to integrate object recognition capabilities with SLAM front ends. We've seen already a lot of object recognition systems use deep learning, so this might not be the most difficult thing to do, but it'll be important if we are to ship these SLAM systems and say that they solve real-world perception tasks. Finally, enabling lifelong learning has really been a passion of mine. The reason why I was excited to cast SLAM as a deep learning problem was the idea that continual deployment can create data that improves the quality of the core system. Each time a human goes out into the world, they see something and they experience something. When they come home and they digest what they experienced, they are more agile the next day maneuvering in that same space. I believe these capabilities will be important to create the next generation of SLAM systems. In summary, I talked about Superpoint, that is our convolutional neural network architecture for visual SLAM front ends. I discussed self-supervised learning using homographies as well as visual odometry backends. I also discussed the robustness of Superpoint 
and when you take super point ideas and apply them to slightly different problems like pattern specific super points. I introduced super glue and super glue has really been very successful at doing lots of matching sort of tasks and we hope that more and more people will see the light and extend our technique to build more impressive slam systems. And finally, I outlined some basic ideas for how we can go beyond pairwise matching and finally build an end-to-end -end slam system. So before I wrap up, I want to let everybody know that tomorrow, Paul Sarlin will be speaking about superglue at this workshop because our method did win the first place in two visual localization challenges at this workshop. On Friday, June 19th, Paul will also be speaking at the Image Matching and Local Features and Beyond workshop. We applied our data, or I'm sorry, we applied our superglue technique to that outdoor data, and it also works extremely well. If you're interested in learning more about superglue, I've shown on this slide the different places that you can learn more about superglue in the next few days. Finally, I would like to thank you for your time and attention. If you are interested in learning more about our work, follow us on Twitter. And if you're interested in collaborating or you have questions about our work, feel free to send us an email. Thank you very much. Have a great day.